for me, 20 years seems like almost a lifetime in some ways. And in some ways, it seems like it happened yesterday because the memories that I still have are so fresh in my mind. Michael Amor, a senior at Monsignor Farrell High School. It has been 20 years since the September 11, 2001 terror attacks on the World Trade Center. Monsignor Farrell High School has lost 23 alumni on that tragic day, some reporting to work at the World Trade Center, others risking their lives as firefighters, NYPD, Port Authority officers, and even the fire patrol. Jack Ohm, class of 1976, was one of the rescuers who reported to the World Trade Center on that day. Now a retired FDNY battalion chief and a Monsignor Farrell Alumni Hall of Famer, Jack shares his story on 9-11 with us as you remember all those who have died that day and all those we have lost since due to World Trade Center related illnesses, especially our alumni. To commemorate the anniversary of September 11th, my Farrell brothers and I will read all the names of the alumni of so we may never forget. From all of us at Monsignor Farrell, our thoughts and prayers go out to all the families who have lost a loved one on that day and the days since. We thank all of our Farrell brothers who have served and currently serving in the United States military and uniformed civil services for putting themselves in harm's way to defend our freedoms and keep us safe. We will never forget. Vir Fidelis and God bless America. So that's the good part about being a fireman and I think a police officer, that's your second family. You know, you have your family at home, but when you go into the firehouse, they become your second family. And just like a family gets together and rises to the occasion, uh, so did the fire department, so did the police department. And I th one of the, my best memories, and I have so many bad memories of 9-11, but I have so many good memories too. And I like to remember the good memories, but how the country came together how they all came to our aid, New York City's aid, after 9-11, how everybody was nice to each other, let people cut in line, uh, you know, just came to ground zero to help us. One of my, my best stories, it was, I was on top of the pile on 9-11, now probably the morning of 9-12, uh, you know, searching for survivors, searching for bodies, uh, getting frustrated, we weren't finding anybody, and I looked down at the bottom of the pile and I see marching in formation, a group of firemen, and they're marching up to my, my location on the pile. And I said to myself, these, these guys are not New York City firemen, because we don't do anything in formation. And these guys were in like a parade formation, marching. And they got to my, my you know, spot, my location, and they gave me a big salute, said, Chief, we're here to help you. How can we help? And I can't tell you the feeling I got, it just overwhelmed my heart. I asked them where they were from and how they got there because I know they grounded all the air traffic that morning. And he said, we, uh, we're from a small town in Tennessee. When we saw the second tower get hit, we jumped into our cars and we drove 12 hours to New York City to help our brothers in need. And, and I tell that story often because that reflects the goodness of America. And that's the goodness I saw for my nine months on the pile and later on in the pit. Frank Spinelli, class of 1974. Stephen Huxco, class of 1975. Charles Margiata, class of 1975. Thomas Selleck, class of 1976. Steve Fiorelli, class of 1976. Stephen Loria, class of 1979. John Casaza, class of 1981. Going through 9-11 shows us that we can go through a lot, get through a lot of tough times. And I, when I speak to the, to the, especially the younger kids, maybe the grammar school kids, middle school kids, when I tell them, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. It matters how many times you get up. And, and New York City got knocked down. America got knocked down on 9-11. But look how beautiful New York City is now. 
And look how beautiful this country still is. We have our problems, don't get me wrong. You know, and we are, we're going to get through them. Because we are Americans, after all. And we'll get through this pandemic, too. Marty Egan, class of 1982. Scott McGovern, class of 1983. Neil Levy, class of 1985. Stephen Haggis, class of 1987. Brian Canazaro, class of 1988. Vincent Laeda, class of 1988. William Michuli, class of 1989. But my daughters get it about giving and my daughter went to Boston College, my, my baby daughter, and she says, Dad, say it this way, when one gives, two receive. And that's the secret. It's not more money, it's not nicer cars, it's not bigger houses, because those things are just things. But when you actually help somebody, it makes you feel good inside. And I don't know, I, I believe that's part of my feral upbringing, how they taught me here in the 70s to give back, to help people. Because you, when you're feeling bad about yourself and you go help somebody, you'll be surprised how good you feel about yourself at the end of the day. Jeffrey Stark, class of 1989. Sean Bauman Jr., class of 1990. Carl DeFranco, class of 1991. Joseph Ionelli, class of 1991. Peter Mulligan, class of 1991. Michael Clark, class of 1992. Keith Roma, class of 1992. Christopher Mozillo, class of 1992. Joseph Viciano, Class of 1997. I think you said we lost 23 that day. Yeah. And we continue to lose uh, feral men from illnesses of 9-11. Uh, one of my uh, good friends from high school days, Tommy Selleck, was uh, not a fireman, but he was down there. He worked in midtown Manhattan, and he was down to the World Trade Center for a meeting that morning. And unfortunately, he never came home. And uh, just a quick story, I, I got a call from my wife that night on a pile, and she asked me how things are going. I said, things are not good here. And then she told me, well, I have some more bad news for you. I said, you can't have any more bad news. I see all the bad news in my world right here. And uh, she said, Tommy Selleck never came home. And he was there that morning. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't you know, comprehend all of that at the time. But Tommy was a, a track runner like myself and we ran four years for Farrell and we were part of this great school uh, for f those four years and uh, I'll never forget Tommy and his sense of humor. Raymond Rigucci, class of 1970. William O'Connor, class of 1975. Dennis Hogan Jr., class of 1979. Patrick Murphy, class of 1981. Ned Thompson, class of 1986. Farrell men and what they teach us here at Farrell guides your, you from the day you graduate to the rest of your life. I still remember my Farrell teachers I still remember the priests and brothers that were here that shaped me because when we come to Farrell, we're a piece of clay. And your parents mold you, but your teachers and the brothers and priests that we had here at Farrell in the 70s shaped you even further and gave you the instinct to do good and to help your fellow man. And I think that's a simple thought about being a feral man. Just go out and do good and help people. And that's what I got for Farrell. You know, I, I learned how to study from Farrell, and I learned how to get good grades. 
But that's secondary to being a good Farrell man and something that's special about Monsignor Farrell High School.